Paul Begley and the Giants. The reason why I'm bringing this up because I try to talk about spells and illusions and how people can get tricked up with some of the analogies that somebody will say, all right? And that little thing he did on YouTube about that promoting somebody's book, I don't know too much about the book itself, but what he read, you know, and was confirming within itself is technically that the Christians are trying to come into this new understanding of, of how the angels slept with the women and made giants and did all this other stuff. All right, the end and the Satan's seed. Now, if you have 100,000 people following you, all right, and watching you and listening to you, my whole thing is this. How the heck you just come into a new understanding and, and, and you preaching this stuff? How in the heck? That means that you don't know who the people are. That means you don't know who the seeds are and the enmity of the seed and what that means. You don't know because the way he was talking was like, hey, Satan had to talk to himself and the prophecy came and Genesis 3.15 and, and all this other stuff and Satan had seen that prophecy and, and this is that and the third. Well, technically the book of Genesis is a story out of Enoch, Jasher and some other scrolls telling the story of how everything went about when God talked to Enoch and let Enoch know and, and Jasher and all of them. So this is something else that you know what I'm saying is another lie that people fashion into their liking and do what they do. And he's of the same hoplo group and whole nine yards of these Grecians and Romans that used to do this. He's of the same hoplo group that these Canaanites and Edomites would do these things. So he talks about the stars and the quasars, but then he'll talk about paganism. All right. And, and throw Orion in there and promote other books on all this other stuff that has to do with that in the galaxy. So do you see what I'm saying? And anybody who's of Yahweh knows that when they built the Tower of Babel, the first thing Yahweh did, when you read the scrolls, he says, yeah, let's play around with them. He tells the angels, let's play around with them. So when they shot their arrows up to the sky, when they had the tower up there, he let it come down and look like blood. They said, oh, we killed them, we killed them. And then that's when... You know, he changed the tongues and, and all that other stuff happened. So anyway, with that being said, this is the thing, things that I'm talking about that do get uh, make me upset. But then when I pray and I ask the Lord for discernment, he shows me all of the prophets and I read all of their stories of all the things they went through. And I give, you know, I bow my head down even for those that are not mentioned in the books, in the scrolls at all like the ones that Jezebel killed. There are so many of them that nobody even knows about. And they had very, very few that would listen. All right, because that's how bad it was in the world. That's why there were so many of them because it was so bad. So it goes to show you that if there's 7.2 billion people in the world today, and only 380 million people are gonna make it in heaven, that's a lot of people going to hell. So what, it, what I do, is by doing this right here, by showing you, okay, this man was using words and phrases and etymologies to 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 make to fashion a truth into a lie. All right, he didn't really even know the story, and then he made Christians really look bad because that means that you're not saved and you're not of God if you never came to an understanding of what the giants were, where the separation was, and that Cain was of of Lucifer. That was Lucifer's seed. Yeshua says it, disciples say it, the prophet said it. I mean, it is what it is. And he told you that. Then after the flood, we have this separation that went to Esau, and then that was the split between him and Jacob. He separated even more. All right? And it's all in the DNA. Only two shall carry the daggone um, apes and the elephant gene. All right? And so he's not even telling the truth. He's better off saying, well, listen, I'm a Gentile. I'm preaching the word and there was a time that there was a separation and this is that and the third, but I'm reborn over again. I'm renewed of my mind and my conscience and all I like to say, this is that and third. By him doing that right there and then whatever he earns, giving it and helping out these people instead of being part of a line, no, he's not doing that. 
he's working with the same ones that's in Revelations, all right, and that, that Yeshua and that Yahweh and all the prophets been battling this whole time. So that means that if you're lying and you're fashioning a lie and, getting, and you're taking money from these same liars, you're a part of that lie. And it's always a root that and everything's always intertwined together. There's not no if, ands, and buts. And that's the truth of it. So you guys need to start watching out and listening because, like I said, everything carries a spiritual meaning for it if you fall for it unless you ask for discernment and you know how to discern it and see the bull crap. I'm not knocking the man because the new stuff he gets right. Hey, Mexico had an earthquake. It swallowed up. The earth opened up and swallowed up the whole river. Oh, this happened, this happened. He'll report stuff that we don't see on the news. So that part, he got, but then he'll mix you up with that important facts about what's going on in the world with scripture and then that's when you get caught up because that's the hook in the jaw that Satan will reel you in on. Remember, they're called familiar spirits because they're familiar with everything and they'll go back and forth. Paul had to deal with them all the time. Him, John, and Mark. 